I have to get you guys set up here. Oh man, here we go. How about that? How's that? Hopefully that'll be okay. Um, wrapping up the knives for 2018 and uh, it's going good, but today's video of course is what the title says. I don't know what it is right now because I haven't thought of it up. But I wanted to share a little video with you guys because of the fact that when I originally got my start on YouTube, um, it was to promote uh, some knives that I had, especially one for the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund that I did a couple of years ago. A year ago? A year and a half ago? Two years ago now, I think. Um, and when I first started putting videos out, um, I did them on some, actually it was even before the work, the, that knife, is um, I put some videos out just to try it. You know, I was new to YouTube. I'd been watching for a better part of, you know, two years or something like that, three years. And uh, so I put a couple videos out and I would always record my videos. I used only my phone. I had my iPhone. And uh, my phone would be vertical like this and I'd record it. And I didn't know it at the time, but when you put the videos on, you go to watch them on, on YouTube, they're, you know, they're all weird. You know, you get this little straight view like that. And somebody mentioned about turning my phone sideways. And so I did and, and it worked out pretty good. And I also, for you guys that are new, I might be always uh, saying at the end of my videos, my outro, I guess they call it, is the uh, keep me from the bottom of the YouTube bucket. Well, this was the YouTube bucket. Yeah, it was my rag bo uh, bucket here, a BDX bucket. <laughs> I used to clip my otter box on this and I would rotate my phone to follow me to do stuff or I'd put it up on a chair. I'd put wood blocks on the counter and I'd, to get it up high. That's all I had. So it was kind of funny to get into that. But I did a couple videos a while back on a uh, Badlands backpack that I still own. I still have it to this day. And uh, it seems like it's gotten a lot of, you know, attention and everything. And uh, I was wrapping up some things. And, and we uh, um coming up at the end of the year. And I wanted to go through my bag because I have been carrying a different bag other than that Badlands pack. I did a video on a Badlands backpack, and that was pretty much my my daily bag. I would throw, I would pack it, I'd throw it in a truck, and I'd leave it in a truck all the time. But the downfall with that was is when I got me and the kids in the truck, or my wife and the kids got in there, and maybe we all had our bags or the purses, and you know maybe even when we did some trips, we took the dog with us, and we you know Dutch would go with us, and and it gets crowded. So I'm throwing it in the back of the truck or anything like that, which was also fine, but. It got to be to where the pack was just a little bit too cumbersome. Very comfortable pack. To this day, I, I still love that pack. I love the mesh, how it keeps it off your body. It's just amazing. But it is quite large and cumbersome for a daily carry bag. So I ended up getting myself this little black bag here the better part of a year and a half ago. And um, I started using it. And honestly, there's actually no actual name on the outside of it. I'll have to go in it and look. Uh, but... It says, on the, like a little tag here, it says WFS Tactical. And I think I might have bought this at uh, the local Big Five or like a Sports Co. or something like that. It was $35, $40 on sale. Um, and the reason why I was figuring I'd do the video is because I learned that my kids got their pack about three years ago. And they're Coyote Brown. And they're very similar to this. A couple of different strap changes, but otherwise they're pretty much identical. And then I saw Drago Bags has a pack like this. And then even Maxpedition was making a pack similar to this. And I couldn't help but think maybe they're all coming out of the same factory in China or, or Taiwan. Many of you know that you know, you'll have companies, even with tools. I've done some tool reviews, reviews or you get some other gear. And you'll notice that like my jacket I did. I did a jacket review. It's a great jacket. I still have that. And it, it's a very popular video. Uh, but that jacket's made by four or five different people labeled or it's made by the same people But it's sent out to four or five different companies and they put different labels or something like that on it So you're pretty much getting the same jacket except there's some places that charge you 25 30 bucks for the jacket other places are charging you $200 for a jacket and it you know literally looks the exact same thing patches zippers all that stuff So I digress um, I got to go through my pack real quick and I got some uh, medical shears that I bought because I haven't had any for a while. And um, I wanted to get some, so I bought some for the house and for everybody else. So I wanted to put this in my bag, go through to make sure I didn't have any expired foods. But I thought I'd share with you this pack because they still make this pack or a very similar um, uh, copy of this pack. So I thought some of you might be interested. So um, let's get opening this pack up, I'll show you what I have, and see what it's like. So like I said, this was, um, it's a copy 
of a copy of a copy probably. There are tons of packs that are very similar. Um, the first and foremost, one of the things I liked was these bottom uh, straps like this to be able to put a jacket in there or a little tiny bedroll or something like that. That was the big thing. I have not used them for that. Most of the time I take my jacket and um, if the pack's full, I'll just put it in here. And because these here, they got these little adjustable straps, which I turned over. You can see how I, uh, hopefully you guys will see this. I turned them over to keep these from coming loose. So here, let me undo this one for you real quick. I'll show you. So see how the, the, the webbing comes up and it goes through these? So, well, this is adjustable, so this can expand more. But I didn't want it to come loose, so I just turn them backwards and I reverse them into here. And I don't even know where I learned this from, but um, I do that so now the, the, the straps won't come loose and get, you know, slack or anything. So, but anyhow, I usually put a jacket in there, but I actually have a jacket inside this because this pack has been for all the spring, summer, and fall, and it, I don't carry a whole lot in there. So I want to make sure what I have in here is going to be working. But what's really nice is a really heavy-duty uh, carry strap. Some of the higher-end packs that are similar shaped like this, this will actually be a port where you can lift this up and there'll be a hose that, or a hole there that you could run your hose through for your bladder and everything. Uh, that's what they make this part for right here. It's got a nice backing. It's padded. Um, you know, it, it's soft. It's not very worn out because I don't go hiking with this that much. What I do is I just use it to throw in my truck. So in case I broke down or something happened, I would have something I can put on. I have a bag bigger than this by Maxpedition. It's probably a third of the, you know, one third bigger than this. And it's a medical bag for my family and I. But this was nice. It's comfortable. Uh, there's no structure in there. You can see how it's got a bit of a curve to it. When you fill this thing up, it does blow up a little bit. But... It's soft, so if I were to pr compress this a little bit over my shoulders, it will compress, and it's not going to be you know, too uh, um, annoying where it's going to push into the center of your back. Uh, it has been good. The few times I did wear it, it, it hasn't been uncomfortable. Uh, but I think this is their bladder pouch right here. So It's just a deep pouch. It goes all the way down to the bottom here. I use it because I have my Baofeng antenna in here. I have an extension Baofeng in here. It's a... Uh, um, Nagoya or whatever it is. I, yeah, good luck on trying to pronounce it. I don't know. Uh, but it's a nice antenna. My buddy uh, steered me onto it. He's a ham operator. And he referred, he recommended those. And so I got that. Uh, but what's really nice is, unlike um, a lot of the backpackers backpacks, this pack and some of your more militaristic and your bushcrafting ones allow you to, de to, allow you to compartmentalize. Meaning you can actually have certain sections of areas in the pack that you don't have to go into the backpack like a backpacker's pack or have individual bags in the main compartment to get to whatever you need. These bags allow you to have little pouches so you don't have to go into the main one just to get to little things. Um, in this case, what I usually do is um, I got an inhaler. Um, I actually ended up with uh, bad allergies here in Washington State. So I keep this with me if we go out in an area and I have that. Plus I'm allergic to cats and some dogs. So I keep an inhaler, and my son needed it too as well. Uh, flashlight. Uh, this is a good one. It's not a strobe one or anything else, and it's a it's a fairly cheap one, but these things are working so good. I bought a bunch of them, and um, it's just, you know, one illumination, like 600 lumens or 400 lumens. It's not a fancy Olight or anything or Surefire. It's just a cheapo I got from Lowe's. Works great. Um, hand sanitizer uh, for cleaning the hands and as well as for helping uh, start fires. Headlamp, because as much as a flashlight's good for using for searching, this is much better to use to keep your hands free. And I really like headlights quite a bit. And again, just a little cheapo. Uh, this is a budget bag. This isn't a high end. You're not going to find a really fancy $250 headlamp. This is one of those you get at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's got the high, low, and a red light. So that's all good. Of course, got my compass. Got to have one of those. And I like this one because it lets you put it on the map. And then you can read everything and see all your uh, topographical uh, information. A real little lighter. It still works. Yes, it's been bouncing around in a pack for a better part of a year and a half. Chewing gum. I find chewing gum to be really cool because it helps keep your mind off of eating. Curves that appetite. Helps you clean your teeth if you're out and you can't brush your teeth. And then the chewing gum, you can actually chew it for a while, use it for bait to get squirrels. So that's another interesting thing. Okay, that was the little compartment. This compartment here, this is more of the meat and potatoes of what this pack is about because what's usually here is what uh, I find a little bit more important or I don't want to have buried at the bottom of the pack. 
Got a couple of chem lights right here. I got yellow and green. Uh, my food, my snack bars, which um, they should be pretty good to go. Yeah, they're expiring. Uh, this is February 2019, February 2019, and um, February 2019. And um, I love the Cliff Bars. This peanut butter banana actually tastes a lot like peanut butter, um, um, tastes like banana bread. So it was really cool. And then the kids like Z-Bars, so I get a oatmeal ice one and a chocolate one. I keep something there for the kids. Uh, I usually have a couple more in here, but they're gone. A uh, couple of pens. <clears throat> got a signal flare, so if we were out someplace, when we do go out in the woods or anything, I would have something like this. If someone was looking for me and I don't know exactly how to get, tell them where I'm at or if, you know, if I'm trying to use my compass on my uh, or my GPS on my phone, you can only get so close. These would really be helpful. My wife carries one in her backpack when she goes hiking. She's got a really lightweight Osprey. It can't hurt to have one of these when people are looking for you. Um, most of the time, I carry a Glock 43. That's usually my everyday carry uh, handgun. And I keep, uh, and as well as my wife, we both have 43s. So I keep enough magazines for the both of us. Right here, this doesn't count what I might have in my truck or her vehicle. And that's it. So that that's a lot right there, and just these two bags right here, that is a lot of content. Um, the middle pack here, as you see, there's a little pouch off to the side. This will open up. You've got a little pouch right here, and you've got these two little net pockets right there. Not a big deal. Um, keep some handy wipes, bio wipes. These are really good. Uh, really nice uh, bio wipes. They'll biodegrade if left out in the woods or something like that, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I got a bandana. I do have a Shemog, but it's in my uh, uh, my big pack. I have a big Alps pack with an external frame, which I might be doing a video on in 2019. Because I've had that for two years now, and I think it's a pretty nice pack. So I got a bandana, and uh, this is Gorilla Tape. I went with Gorilla Tape versus anything else, only because Gorilla Tape is narrow. Uh, you can't get duct tape like that, or you can fold it over. But I usually have to carry for two or three people, so I just got the whole roll. Um, this is a, uh, um, it's kind of like a paracord, but it's actually, I bought it from a camping store, and it's a little bit thinner. It's not the best for tying knots because it's so smooth like, like paracord is, but it does work nonetheless, and uh, it's a little bit thinner. And I think this had a five, as thin as it was, I think this had a 500 or 700 um, pound tensile strength. So it was really nice. It's a little bit more expensive than paracord for this, uh, I think this is like a 50 foot hank right here or something, but... I got it because it was lightweight and uh, it was so strong. Now the last, the last one here, uh, making sure your guys are still on camera. I'm still on camera. Is the main bag. Now uh, this is my um, this is my Gary. It's a uh, um, a uh, let's see here. Let's go. Da -da -da, let's see. Phil Power 650. Okay, this is one of those um, uh, packable ones here. Uh, it's just says Gary on it. I think we got this these from Costco. It expands, it's full of that polyfill. It's like a feather and a polyester fill combination in the jacket. It's really nice, really warm actually. These things are awesome and super lightweight. Uh, of course, I've got a really cool knife from this knife maker called CK Knife and Tool. <laughs> and uh, this is one of my rogues with uh, Kingwood and the uh, decorative pins on there. That's one of the decorative pins. Of course, I'm gonna plug my own knife company. So I've got that on there. I keep that inside the pack. Um, really, really happy with Mechanics gloves. I love Mechanics gloves. These are brand new, but I haven't used. I I might have put them on once, uh, but they stay in the bag. But I've had these for the better part since I bought the pack. You know, a year and a half, two years now, and I just love. I use Mechanics gloves all over the place, and that's why I keep them wherever I go. I love the Mechanics gloves. The padding. Um, I don't know if there's a specific name for this this style or not. Um, M-Pact. M-Pact. If you guys will see that, that's M-Pact. They're large, but I just love mechanics gloves. Love them to the pieces. Um, first aid bag, we'll get that in a second. This is the ham radio. This is a seal line bag. This has, inside here, I have uh, cards that my buddy made made up for me. A uh, marine buddy of mine who's a ham operator, he talks to people all over the world, too. This guy's crazy. Um, he made, not only do I have the, the Bale Funk 6, but he went ahead and made us these cards. And this was just so cool. Between the Morse code and all of our areas, different types of like, communication plans, 
you got US amateur radio bands, how this all goes. I mean, all the different channels for different places. It was amazing. And then uh, I got extra batteries in here, and then I've got my little bale fung. It's the uh, BF uh, BFF8HP. And this is a really nice radio and a very strong radio. Uh, so I'll have uh, batteries in here. I have the earpiece, and I also have an external um, battery to plug a cell phone in to charge a cell phone up. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Water purification, um, just a little iodine, part A and B. Uh, I got a Sawyer Mini right here as well as the water pouch. I carry that with. My Nalgene bottle is not in here because I normally keep one in here, but I took it out a while back. I was changing out water and I was using it so much throughout the summer, I wouldn't put it in a bag. I just kept it at, uh, at the, you know, the floorboard of my truck, but I have a blue Nalgene bottle, a plastic one. Uh, so that's my main water or to put water back into. But I've got one of these because they're really lightweight. Uh, let's see, I got paracord, regular paracord here, Coyote Brown. Because um, as you guys know, I, uh, if you guys follow the channel, I do have a little bit of paracord. That is all paracord up there. Yeah, that's. Uh, I used to buy paracord by the uh, uh, by the pallet. Meaning, uh, when you went, when you bought from the manufacturer, you had to buy twelve thousand feet. That was a thousand feet per roll, and I had to buy twelve rolls minimum. And I would buy twelve thousand or twenty-four thousand feet of paracord because I used to make paracord bracelets and necklaces and keychains and motorcycle whips, all that kind of stuff. So that's the remnants of what I had left over. So let's get back. Okay, so that is it for the main pack as well as everything else in there. Oh, I got a little another little bandana in here. So that is it. That's it in a nutshell. I mean, it's a really durable, lightweight pack. It's thing's been tossed in the back of my truck. It's been on road trips with us. It's been to Michigan twice, um, or no, three times. Um, but it's holding up really well. Um, I'm sure guys have, you know, they'll complain because it's Chinese made or something. It's not a Vertex or some of the other packs, which is fine. It's um, this is a budget pack. I mean, this is a $35 backpack right here, and this is what it looks like. It's slightly faded to me. I can see the slight fade. I don't know if you guys will see it on camera, but um, between being out in the trucks and, and being wiped down and stuff like that and bounced around, um, it's slightly faded from when I first got it. But, I mean, for a two-year-old pack that's been beat around quite a bit and what it can hold, that's pretty good. Now, my first aid box, this is something I got from Walmart or um, maybe Fred Meyer. They sell these, and it's kind of a, it's like a semi-hard plastic uh, liner, and it's like a, that's no, that ripstop uh, sill type material around it, uh, made by Lifeline. That's the company that you'll, you might find them, uh, but yeah, it's pretty nice and it does expand, but it is somewhat of a, uh, not hard, but it's, you know, semi-structured. But this is what I normally keep inside here. So, we have um, ibuprofen and Tylenol. I got some gloves. Uh, we have, um, let's see here, we got this uh, scar. <laughs> yeah, there's a big story about not having gel, burn gel in there. These were... These were the little scissors I had at one time. These are those little scissors in here, and that's what I needed these for. So these are going to go in my bag to replace these little ones, but I'll still keep them in here. Um, again, redundancy. There's some more hand cleaner. I didn't know that was in there or I forgot. Um, let's see. We got over here, we got, oh, liquid liquid skin. It's a nice little thing. It Actually, it's liquid skin. Like in a jar, you could take this if you don't have super glue. Um, then we have a reflector uh, a mirror here for reflecting, for signaling. We have some uh, triangular bandage, a little bit of gauze, a little spool of gauze right there. Um, tweezers, and let's see what else we got here. We got a uh, little bit of duct tape right here that was hiding. Um, we've got a bunch of band-aids. There's some gauze pads in here and some little tiny boo-boo band-aids. And we have matches. And we have chapstick. We have a couple of these little dust masks, uh, or these little, you know, filter type mask. We have some chapstick there. And then just some more band-aids as well as we have, I threw in here uh, some uh, needles, some suturing needles with a little thread that's attached, as well as some alcohol swabs and uh, some steri strips, which uh, steri strips are like a uh, um, 
It's like that packing tape. It's a, it's a long strip with like little strings in it. And it's really good to, to close up uh, injuries and sutures. That's what we used on my thumb when I cut my thumb open. Um, I just, instead of getting stitches, we just I just put the steri strips on it and it kept the two flaps together. So uh, so that is it, gang. That is my, my little go bag, my little bob, my little daily pack. So hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully it wasn't something that was uh, too mundane or boring. I've never really done much of a, a bag dump like this or anything. I know other guys have done that kind of stuff, but... I thought I was coming down. I got some other videos to do. I got some other stuff to uh, film and, and package up and uh, start working on some other knives. And so I thought, well, since I got to update my bag, I got to take it apart anyhow to kind of see what's in it. What do I need to add? What do I need to take out? I thought I'd share that with you. So um, comments down below. I do appreciate it. Thank you to all the new subs that have been jumping on board. And uh, until the next video, guys, you take it easy. Remember, like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff to keep me from the bottom of the... YouTube bucket or BDX bucket. <laughs> Have a good one.